So there's there's also like I know that there's different camps, right? Right. Now with the different camps, there might be a slight difference in certain beliefs or di certain doctrines. Yeah, definitely. Is there a uh, what is a type of I guess doctrine that would like excommunicate you from Hebrew Israelism at all? You know that uh, that uh, rape doctrine that GMS used to teach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sleeping with white women. <laughs> Okay, so he said the grape doctrine, and he laughs, being that he's familiar with GMS, and obviously he's familiar with uh, IUIC and Sakari and so forth. Matter of fact, he did have a debate with, um, if I'm not mistaken, with uh, Hakar and Hassad. This is a couple of weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken. So when he said that, um, that's, that's why I opened it up with this scripture. So... If he doesn't re repent from that, then he's guilty of taking away from the scriptures, which is against the law, adding, which is against the law of the scriptures, or the, against the laws of the Most High. Giving all praises to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem HaRachachodash, saying double honors to our apostles and elders, very great millstone, peace and blessings to the Lord's hopefully elect, right, as Elder Pastor Har, you know, plainly puts it. You will be guilty of adding and taking away from the book. So this video he put up as he titled the lesson that he's he's playing a clip with this soon to be debate. If it already happened, if it ha yeah, I guess it already happened with uh, Captain Zarek and I guess this this Christian guy. Um, and you heard the question he asked. He he says, "What would just com completely." discommunicate you from Hebrew Israelites at all and meaning you're not even an Israelite basically and he says the the, the law because he said that the rape doctrine really is just the law that's written in the scriptures in Deuteronomy chapter 22 and then he said um, sleeping with Edomite women which that's that's not written either but the what, what highlights the most is that you know we're with this late in the game and yet you still have Israelites that will not receive the judgment that's written in the book of Deuteronomy 22 where the Lord gave the Israelites a commandment and structure as of what to do if when or if the event that an actual uh, grape has occurred in our in our borders and since the, those, you know, it's made edif made manifest that starting with the apostles and elders, you know, a great millstone, we're the only ones that stand and actually defend and are not ashamed as of what's written and just simply teach it. It started with the apostles because they took the blunt of the, you could say, the jokes, you know, especially uh, the apostles to Har and you know, to this day, um, they taken the they taken the, the the blunt of the jokes. But you know what the scripture says: humility before honor. So, for the law's sake, the apostles and elders were being humiliated for the sake of the law, and it went on for quite some time, um, well over ten years now since the apostles and elders brought that out. And um, it was really a test as well for us, the brothers uh, who are in the truth and who are in Great Millstone and even our followers and the few brothers and sisters that follow us. Because with all that heat, it was a test to see, like, would we be uh, also, will we, will we be ashamed of what's written? And we're not because the Lord opened up our eyes to understand what's written, the scriptures clearly tell you i'll read it but it clearly tell you that in this book there will be contained um, both sweet and bitter as revelation chapter 10 verse 9 says and i went unto the angel and i said unto him give me the little book and he said unto me take it and eat it up and it shall make thy belly bitter but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey right and I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. 
So the truth contains both bitter and sweet. A a uh, an approved meal would have, you know, your your steak, your meat, maybe a little starch, right? And then also the bitter herbs that will complete, you could say, a healthy meal or a diet. The bitter herbs are necessary. So the bitterness of the truth is necessary. And when you read the law, there are actually a lot of hard things that you read in the law of the judgments of the Heavenly Father. But you have to accept, okay, this is the law of the Heavenly Father. You even have to go as far as to do research to understand different types of lifestyles that we lived in the ancient. Because growing up in the land of our captivity, we're programmed and we're taught to think, you know, different weird things, right? Like in this life, um, you're not even considered an adult until you hit the age Technically, what, 18, and depending on what state you are, then it's, it's 16. But really, in the ancient world, we went to work and we were out there. And we were, for the most part, self-sufficient by the age, uh, starting at 12. And then, hell, by the time you even got to 18, you, 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 were, you were moving. And like, you know, King David, before he even became king, all the accomplishments that he accomplished, he became a king of Israel at 30 years old. So... He was moving, we were moving at a much younger age, and you read about all the accomplishments he did, and this is including dealing with Saul, all of that. He did all of that in his, in his 20s. He was a mighty man. And, you know, in this lifestyle, by the time, hell, you hit 30, you haven't accomplished even a fraction as of what the man in the ancient have accomplished. We live in different worlds, so... Part of that is to understand the old customs and how we did things and how things were different. So trying to receive what's written and trying to also apply it to the same logic and how you grew up in the land of your captivity, you're going to be offended if you don't do the research and understand that things were different. And that the truth contains both bitter and sweet. And the fact remains is the Lord gave a law as of what to do in the event that a grape was to occur. The apostles and elders, when they decided to bring it out and they stood on it and they just simply said, this is how it was in the ancient. A lot of Israelites got offended. And we're well over 10 plus years of constantly dealing with it and teaching it. And they still refuse it. Most of them still refuse it. So, you know, basically what Captain Zaryak said is that, you know, for the most part, Great Millstone, we're not even considered brothers in his sight, in his eyes, because we haven't changed our stance on what the law says. And we stand firmly and we just teach what the law says. So it almost sounds like he's saying that we're not even technically brothers. So because we we defend what the law says. And that just means that he's still ashamed of what's written. And he, what they don't realize is that this is a window of opportunity of repentance for them to receive it. That's how you know it's in the back of his mind. That's why that's the first thing he said. All that rape doctrine. So you're still ashamed of it. You still haven't received it. You know, a lot of these guys believe that if they could, they would just delete that out of the scriptures. You know, control all delete or edit edit out. And that's why the Lord said, you shall not add or take away. So they're basically moving about their their ways as if it's not written. They've like mentally deleted it out of the scriptures because it's too hard for them to receive. And it, it doesn't sit. The judgment of the Heavenly Father doesn't sit well with them in their eyes. These, uh, you know, mortal man. And really what they just don't like is the judgment that the Lord has given. They don't they don't like the fact that the most high just doesn't didn't adopt the the philosophies of Esau Edom in the land of this captivity. And, you know, just say if if this ever happened, you know, off with the man's head automatically. No, there's uh, there's actually cases where even in that event, both parties, both the man and the woman could be put to death. And if there also there also is a, a way where the man who committed the act, if she was not betrothed, if she was not married or promised to anyone, 
then that is uh, a way for him to make her his wife. But their catch is that he has to deal with her all his days. He's not allowed to put her away. So he gave us a law because we're we as a people need uh, he gave it to us because he knows that we're people and he knows that it can happen. And here's what to do in the case that it happened. Now, we're not even doing that today. We teach not to do it today. We just simply teach that was in the law and that's in the scriptures. These uh, Israelites, however, would rather us not hit even touch ton in the first place. And we would just go along with this unhidden rule of we're not going to talk about that. You know, that just means you're ashamed of the scriptures and really just the two scriptures here, Mark 8 and 38. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his father with the holy angels. And then you have uh, the book of Sirach, chapter 42. It says, of these things, be not thou ashamed and accept no person to sin thereby. Of the law of the most high and his covenant and of judgment to justify the ungodly. It says, of the law of the most high. So you don't be ashamed of the law of the most high. And uh, to go about as if it's not written or to be ashamed of the judgment, then that just means that you're ashamed and the Lord's going to be ashamed of you and you're in danger of adding and taking away from the scriptures. And he's not the only one, but this is a window of uh, repentance for them to receive it and to get it because the Lord knows the inward hearts of each man and he knows your mind and he knows if there's any issues you have with him or what's written and it's going to keep bringing it out he's going to keep bringing it out because look you're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven having a personal gripe with the lord you know you just you just this part of the scriptures this story just never set right with you and you know you just don't like it so you're just not going to deal with it so you're just going to go about your ministry and and just say i ain't with that i just never with that well the lord is going to make sure it gets brought up for you to receive it and so that you can deal with that issue you have to repent. It's going to keep being brought up until you deal with it. Why do you think IUIC constantly gets people who walk up to them and asking about the name? Have you ever seen any other Israelite group that constantly gets pressured about the name? Somebody Every time somebody walk up, that ain't his name. What's the name? What's the name? Why, why do you think that is? That's the spirit of the Lord. You don't, you, and I can tell you right now, the leader, Bishop Nathaniel, he knows it. He's he's wondering why does this topic constantly come up? You know, out of all the topics, people always come up and they always mention that name. They don't do that to us because we know the name. We have we teaching people the name. We giving them the names. But when they go up to these camps like IUIC, they always asking about that name. Why do you think that is? That's the spirit of the Lord moving against them. He's getting them to. Uh, Try to repent, their leader to repent and say, you need to teach my name. Are you ashamed of my name? So the Lord going to keep bringing it to your doorstep until you deal with it. Until the window of re repentance is closed. And you've with your mouth confessed that you are ashamed of the law or that you do deny the name. And then now you have to deal with your how by Shem Shah when it comes uh, when there's judgment time. See. So, and so, you know, I guess according to Captain Zariac, Great Millstone, we are considered brothers because we defend the law. So, and um, it's almost as if he's saying, when, when we denounce what's written, then we will be accepted again. Well, let it be known, we, we would happily bear the, 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 the shame, you could say, of, of, of being ostracized. For the scriptures, for the sake of the law, even amongst um, Israelites as well. And we're not ashamed of what's written. So, you know, it is what it is, man. <laughs> With that, Shalom.